When you hear the term fears and phobias, what do you think of? Spiders? Enclosed spaces? Heights? Or maybe even clowns? Every one of us more than likely has a fear of something. But what's the difference between fears and phobias? Fear is one of the most basic human emotions. It is programmed into the nervous system and works like an instinct. From the time we're infants, we're equipped with the survival instinct necessarily to respond with fear when we sense danger or feel unsafe. Fears help protect us. It makes us alert to danger and prepares us to deal with it. Feeling afraid is very natural and helpful in many situations. Fear can be like a warning, a signal that cautions us to be careful. A phobia is an intense fear reaction to a particular thing or situation. When a, with a phobia, the fear is out of proportion to the potential of danger. But to the person with the phobia, the danger feels real because the fear is so strong. Phobias cause people to worry about dread, feel upset by, and avoid the things or situations they fear because the physical sensation of fear can be so intense. So having a phobia can interfere with normal activities. A person with a phobia of dogs might feel afraid to walk to school if he sees or, if they, he, she or she sees a dog on their way. Someone with an elevator phobia might avoid a field trip if it involves going on an elevator. Many of our students deal with fears and phobias. Some of the most common ones for young children are the fear of dark, the fear of animals, especially dogs, the fear of doctors and or needles, social phobias, which may look like intense shyness or not wanting to deal with social settings like parties, sports, or even school, and also separation anxiety, which isn't unusual for younger children, but when students grow out of it, it may be cause for concern. Some of the common fears and phobias for older children and teenagers are fear of public speaking, fear of being alone, claustrophobia, which is the fear of tight spaces, social phobia, which may be the fear of judgment or rejection, or acrophobia, the fear of heights. As you can see, the list can be different, but at times they can overlap as well. How they are treated and how we can engage with these students are very similar. So here are some things to do to help and things not to do. Number one, talk with your student about their fears and be sympathetic. Share with them that many students have fears, but you're there to support them and be with them during the hard times. Number two, monitor your student's media use. This excludes exposure to frightening images in movies, online videos, and violent video games. Make sure media is age appropriate and support their moral compass. Three, do not belittle or ridicule your students' fears, especially in front of their peers. Being afraid of clowns may be funny to you, but it may be an intense fear for your student. Support them even when you may not understand the fear. Number four, don't try to pressure your student into being brave. It will take time and possibly even therapy for them to confront and gradually move beyond their fears or phobia. Pushing them just to confront it head on may create more issues and also cause them to distrust in your own relationship with them. Five, help them practice self-talk to remember what is real and what is imagined. For example, they may say, I'm okay. I may not feel like going, I'm going to die because I'm so scared, but that's just my brain creating panic. I am not in real danger. If I take deep breaths and think calmly, this feeling will go away. And number six, Seeing a therapist to help with the fears or phobias. Psychotherapy or talk therapy is designed to help your student learn new ways of controlling their fear, phobia, and panic attacks if and when they occur. A clinical teaches you, your child, to address these phobias and the feeling it causes by using different techniques. And lastly, don't forget to be praying for your student. Your prayers can look something like this. Lord, I want to lift up my student that struggles with fears and phobias. Allow them to articulate their fears and phobias and know that you are there to support them. Prepare me to see and understand their struggles with their fears and phobias and allow me to be able to comfort them and love them through these struggles. O oh Lord, allow them to find peace in your name and feel your love in the hardest of times. In your name, amen.